I have found this by accident searching the other day about firmware for the X6100. I came across r1cbu.ru. And what I found so far is that R1CBU holds the same sentiments as the rest of us that is no longer satisfied with the quality of this transceiver. So it is a closed code device there that's talking about the X6100, but we're going to try this out. I'm not exactly sure I'm going into this blind, but I've got everything ready. I have a SD card that is blank, a 16 gigabyte SD card plugged into my computer. I already have the files downloaded, but I'm going to walk you through it. The first thing you want to do is go to files and then click on 6100 right there. Scroll down. You're going to see firmware 0 0.20. You're going to click on download. I'm going to hit control and click on download. Open that on a new screen. Then you're going to click download. And when you do, it'll surprise you with this download screen. Just click save, save it. Okay, remember that. Now, the next thing that you want to do, this is fairly new and it's a patch. It's very small. This is a little bit bigger than this. So we're going to click download here and then you'll click download. This is a TGZ. It's not a zip, but for some reason, my computer does like it. So the next thing that you're going to do, and you're going to see in just a moment that in my downloads, I already had TGZ. All I did was right click, click extract all, followed through with it. And I did the same thing for the firmware extract all. Now what you're going to get are some files. So, <laughs> oh no, where did it go? I don't even see it. Things are not in order. There we go. There's our fault folder. So we have the X6100. This is the patch. And then you have the X6100. This is the image. So your downloads folder is not going to look as crazy as mine. And it is what it is. Quit looking around. <laughs> so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to fire up a program called Rufus. And if you don't have Rufus, it's pretty easy to find. Rufus is a way that you can write images to an SD card. So I have my 16 gigabyte SD card in there. We are going to go select an ISO. So we know that the X6100 is what we want to use. We're going to click that and click open. And the rest of this should be okay. And we're going to go ahead and click start. It is going to warn you that you're going to erase all of the data. If you're willing to take that risk, you click that. Now it's going to go ahead and do some stuff here. And I can show you on this video here now that I'm writing to the SD card. It's a micro SD card, so it's real tiny. All right, viewers, at this point, this is going to be less of a how-to and more like we're going to go explore an unknown cave. So you can check out the bookmarks at the bottom to kind of guide us along, but I'm just trying to figure this out as soon as we hit the X6100. Stay tuned. Now, it has opened up data. Whoa, soldier, what are you doing? Why won't you let me? There we go. It's acting crazy. It opens data and it opens boot. Can I put these windows together? It's probably not going to let me. No. Okay. We're going to minimize this for just a minute. Now there is something about this patch that we need to go check out. So if we go back to the patch firmware, he was able to copy it into the SD card, the data partition on his Windows 10 laptop. It ends up that the reason I couldn't see data 
on the Windows File Explorer was because File Explorer only shows drive partitions that have been signed, drive letters. So if you run into this problem, you're going to have to open up disk management and assign a letter to the data partition. Now this is what mine looks like. You can see that I already have a drive letter for my data. We have the boot. We have, this is most likely some disk memory for the program that's gonna run or the operating system that we're about to put on there. So there's data and then you have a whole bunch of unallocated. So you may not need a 16 gig disk, but that's all that I had available. Okay, so we need to put that in the data partition. So I already have that extracted. That is going to be in this one. These two files, file folders right here, what I'm going to do is copy. So that's control C, or you can use, depending on which version of Windows you're using, you can click copy. Now we need to go to that data, and I guess we're just gonna right click and paste right here. Or you could hit Control V. I'm gonna hit paste, and so there's a patch. I don't know what that does, don't know if it works. I haven't run this yet. So now that we have made that, the last thing you wanna do is we need to close all of these folders and then safely eject these two. So let's go eject. Okay, so it's safe to remove both of them. Okay, you wanna make sure that it's safe to remove everything before removing it. So now it's gone off the screen and we have firmware. Now it's time to move to the X6100. So here's our little recording station here at the kitchen table. And we're gonna go ahead and roll on to. Now, from what I understand is we're gonna take the SD card that we just made and plug it into the side of the radio. So the side over here there's an SD card slot. Let's find out which way it goes. I don't know if it goes up or down. It didn't seem to want to go that way. Let's try it this way. Yep, so that's how you're gonna put that in there. Clicks in. Now I think at this point, I went ahead and I hooked up the dunce load. Get that out of the way now. I have the mouse in case we need the mouse because I don't know what we're getting ourselves into here. I have it charging, I have a key connected, I have the microphone connected. So we're about to find out. Let's go ahead and turn it on and see what happens. Ooh, nice. Well, that's different. Or is that different? Gosh, I don't know. Let's find out. This is totally different than what I have seen before on here. The volume still goes to 55. Wow. Is it 307? Um, no, I don't believe it's 307, is it? Let's see, 8, 9, yeah, that's UTC time, so that is correct. It tells you the internal battery, and it also tells you the um, external power voltage, which is pretty close. It's, it's at 13 according to the uh, display here, saying 12.8 here. I'm charging at about one amp. So there's some features on here that I do not know. Let's look at general. So this must be general. So the volume is 50. What does this mean? Ah, there's different. 
Okay, so that's, I, don't, I must not have a speaker. Mic select, you can do mic auto. Oh, I bet you have to turn. That's probably, the minimum level is probably for your display. Look at those birdies. Are those, those have to be birdies in the radio itself. Okay, mic select. So it just says auto. I, I don't know how to change that. Ah, there we go. Handle built in auto. We'll leave it on auto for now. So this controls something. So I guess we have to get used to what we're, what we're looking at, but is it touch screen? I don't think there's any touch screen stuff. I, this, this isn't even a touch screen, is it? Am I dumb? I might be dumb. Ooh, I like that auto dimming feature. So monitor level is set to 50. Wait, I forgot. Monitor level is at 50. That might be a bit loud. Um, also, we are in upper sideband. So how do you change? What is this? Okay, that might be something. The voice rate is 100%, voice pitch, 100 voice volume. If it talks to us, it is going to be definitely loud. Okay, so this just goes through. Okay, so we're back at volume. RF gain, TX power. I like that. So I guess you can adjust. Okay. So this adjusts whatever's down here. This seems to own so far. Oh, okay. So you can click that and go through all of these different settings. So that's pretty cool. Um, so that's what the multifunction does. Let's go to, we have filter is a 100 Hertz filter. So what if, that is how wide your filter is, I suppose. Oh, that's the frequency. Okay. I gotcha. That, okay. So that's the filter frequency for upper sideband. So if you don't want as much noise, take it at 28. There we go. Pretty good for, uh, we got mic select. We've already been through this. We got mic gain, um, I think I had, that's the handheld mic. This one is the internal mic. We did monitor level, so let's look at volume four. We got voice. Oh, we have different voices for something. I, I, we're not quite sure. So then we have multifunction. We have minimum level, max level. Okay, spectral zoom. This is what we were just going through with the multifunction key. So, charger, okay. The charger is on right now. If you're gonna operate with an external power, don't use the charger. Turn that junk off. That's what cooks your radio. Man, you could fry eggs up here. Antenna, I think that might have to do with uh, the tuning. If you have different antennas, that might have to do with the tuning. So RIT, you can do RIT. I'm a more of an XIT kind of guy, so I might leave it on that screen right there. And let's look what's for. We got AGC hang, AGC knee, AGC slope. And that is for your gain control, okay? And then you have memories, and then you're back to the beginning. So that's that's pretty nice. That's a pretty good walkthrough. 
It's not, at, for some reason this key is not very responsive. It might have a one second debounce in it, which is why it's not going through the full gamut. So I don't know what those memories are for. We'll deal with that later. Let's look and see what happens if I hit key. Okay, looky there. So we have 15 words a minute. We've got the key volume. Let's see what we're set at here. Okay, so the key is not functioning. It might be, it might be. Let's look, volume. Still, oh, because I'm an upper sideband, it's not gonna do anything. So how do we, I like 700. How do you set the mode? I need to be in manual, so that's nice. Quit shift keying. 100 millis, CW decoder, CW, what does that show? Signal to noise ratio, maybe? Huh, some CW stuff there. Key, okay, so we've been through that. Oh, I'm stupid. There are buttons up here that you can control what, what you're doing. So, Let's take our frequency. Oh, wow, look at that. It shows you the band edges. Okay, now I might have just fallen in love with my radio again just because of this. So let's pretend that we're not on a dunce load. Wow, what, whoa, what was that? Major feedback. Okay, that's not cool. <laughs> oh no, I took it off of the freaking volume. That's the key volume. I wanna keep that at 10, but why is the tone? What is that? I'm gonna have everybody in the house freaking out. Okay, so. Is it because it's also got the microphone live? Oh, that's interesting. It's because it's also got the microphone being keyed. Okay, so that could be a bug. So you might not want to have the microphone connected while doing CW. So let's just pretend. So we're, we're sending on the tiny straight key and let's just see what happens. So it, it does a pretty good job if you'd like to see that there. That would that probably would drive me insane to have the decoder there. So let's see, can we turn the CW decoder off? Yep, there we go. Okay, that's that's pretty cool. Let's switch bands. How do you switch bands on this thing? Is it this button? Nope, don't know what that does. Let me look at the top, because I don't remember. That is V, uh, okay, that's the memory. Um, bear with me just a minute. Tune. Long hold for tune. Shouldn't need to tune because we're using the dunce load. Um, what if we hold this? Okay, so if you hold menu, it doesn't do anything. Frequency step, there we go. Oh, 
we just change the frequency steps. That changes the frequency step. Let's see. That's still a little steep for how I like it. There we go, 10 hertz. I can live with that. I can live with that, okay. All right, so that is pretty daggum cool right there. What if I wanted to send, let's see, let's go to message. Um, you can do beacon. Let's see, message new. This is where having the external keyboard or maybe just having a mouse itself connected would come in handy because I bet you have to use one of these two keys. Okay, so this would take forever to do it this way. But C, Q, P, O, T, A. We're going to try it. D, day. It would be nice if you could just hit space. <laughs> that ain't going to work. Day. Let's see. W. Now we need numbers. Is that what that goes to? One. Yep. Now we need letters. That's probably going to be A, B, C. Oh, now they're lowercase. Dag nabbit. How did we have uppercase before? Is that something I'm going to worry about? I don't think it will matter. Uh, let's just make them uppercase. How about that? R. C. That might matter if you were doing day W1 RCP space. Okay. That's not exactly how long I usually, I, I usually have two, a short one and a long one. Oh, look at there. We've got it. Okay, somebody wants to go outside. We spent three hours out there. You should have seen your business when you were out there. So let's put a new one in there. Let's do the long one that I usually do. So that would be... Let's see if we can get a mouse. Can you go back without doing anything? Um, let's see. Where can you get to... There's the time. Wow, look at all the cool things. So you can have all kinds of settings. Transverter? No way. I don't know what that does. More apps than I care to fuss with right there. So let's go back to general. Let's look at, did we look at app? Did we look at key? We did key. Did we do message? So that's where, if I wanted to send this, let's see if I can call CQ. So then if somebody came back, I might be like, and then if, I'll, I'll put some more, but we're going to see if we can connect, like where's the Bluetooth on this? So that's pretty cool. That's under, was that under message? Yep. So you can make a new message or you can send your message from right there. 
Okay, that's pretty cool. Let's hit DFN and see what's under digital filters. Okay, so there's your digital filters. They're right there. And DFL. Uh, DFL doesn't do anything. I've never used that button before anyways. So, here are the things so far that I do like. It's not asking me, what, what does GPS do? There's no GPS on here, that's silly. I don't even know why I did that. Let's go back to general. Let's go back to app. Now, scan SWR. I click run. There we go. Well, we're not going to see anything because it's um, a 50 ohm dummy load, so it should be flat across the bottom. Did it already run it or is it still running? It was still running. Okay. Check your scale. Looks like there's two scales, perhaps. Uh, that's um, linear and that's probably log. Yeah, I think something's running across the bottom there as it runs through the frequencies that you have selected there. Yeah, you can see it doing something. Okay, so let's unrun that. That's a pretty good one. We're under app, SWR scan. We got recorder, QTH, grid. Oh, that's pretty cool. Don't want to put that in there, but um, we'll go back. To, how do you go back? You gonna let me go back? I don't know if you're gonna let me go back. How do we go back? Come on now. Oh, that was stupid. Oh, that just turns the screen on and off. That's pretty neat. Okay, oh, look at there. It did do something. It went back. So let's go back to app. I click RTTY, that's probably why it did it. Oh, that's interesting. I wouldn't use it, but Pretty cool. I mean, we're not gonna we're not gonna receive anything because we're connected to a dummy load. Let's go back to app. Okay, so you can't. That's where the QTH and the call sign comes in. What about settings? Have we already? Yeah, we've already been through settings. Pretty cool. Exit. Nope, don't wanna change, nope, nope, don't wanna make any changes. Let's go back to app. Okay. So I was getting to the point where I was gonna say what I'm interested in the fact is that it's not asking me for any Bluetooth connections. So I had connected a Bluetooth mouse through the original firmware. So we're not even using that right now. We're using what's on the SD card. So this is a little more, it's different. I think that it's user friendly. I think that it is just different, but it does seem to get rid of all the crap that we're not going to use because Wi-Fi, what's the point of even wasting your time connecting to Wi-Fi? If you're not gonna use WF view and possibly use this as a remote, then pointless. 
uh, the Bluetooth. You can connect a mouse to it. You can connect a keyboard to it. Now that would be useful when entering those. Uh, now you see there's there's a delay and I'm not sure what the deal is with that. There we go. I'm not exactly sure that it even asks for the, um, what's the Spectrum Beta 70? I, I actually don't know much about Spectrum because I don't have one to mess with. There's, there's nothing coming through right now. Chargers off. So if you wanted to stay right there, you could do your XIT. And now we have a way to get to all these cool features. Now the XIT disappeared for some reason in this list. So maybe you have to keep it pressed and then, and then leave it there. So let's see, let's get out of that. Nope. So that goes away. It goes back to whatever's on this screen. So you do have to have it on that screen. So that's interesting. Does the lock button work if you wanted to say you wanted to lock it? I don't know what that just did. Okay, so that must be some kind of reset button instead of actually lo locking it out. Let's see. Oh, it does work. But if you long press, it does something else. Not quite sure, it might be a reset. Um, but when you hold it, and then you let go, tells you R1CBU. So you said battery was 100%, so it looks like, I, I, I swear I just saw that. I, I don't know. So this is running through R1 CBU. So if we go to lower sideband data, lower sideband, upper sideband data, so you can run through those. You got CW, this should be reverse. That's nice. Narrow FM, AM. All right, so everything else on the top seems to work quite well. So let's go ahead and hold the tune button down and see. Yeah, we got a nice, oh, but we're in the lower sideband. So let's see if we were to call CQ. Now we do want to be Wow, if you crank that thing, it really goes. Interesting, but what I also find interesting is that 7.125 I thought was 40 meter SSB. So I don't know what country that's set for. So that's a little bit off. Um, this is, we, we can be all the way up to 7.300. Oh, those lovely little birdies that are built into this thing. All right, so let's say that we're on 7.2. Part of this is I have the, uh, you have to remember how to get there. How in the world did I get there? What was I, what button was I pushing? There we go. Okay, so you can put the FST button. That controls how fast this thing goes. Okay, let's say that we're on 7.250 and we were gonna try to talk to somebody, let's see. Okay, so the monitor is definitely way too loud. That would not be cool. Those must be some quick access memories. Let's see, where did we get to? Do you remember? Was it under app? So getting used to where the settings are is... Yeah, 
is where we're, we're stuck at. We don't want the monitor to be that dang loud. I think that's just the, the spectral. So that's not gonna work. Okay, we're, 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 we're trying to figure this out. We were under general. Where did we see monitor? So we have audio volume. That's, that's normal. Um, what is RF? RF gain, duh, TX power. We know what that is. Speaker mode, speaker mode is off. Ah, oh, dang, come in. Check, check. Whiskey one, radio Charlie, papa, testing. All right, so our power is at 10. I don't know what I just did. I don't know why it's not feeding back now. But we need to figure out monitor level. There we go. It's under general volume three of four monitor level. Yo, don't forget this one controls the, the controls there. So let's see. Whiskey one, radio Charlie Papa testing. Through a dummy load, of course. Okay, let's go back to message. Oh, you can name them. Let's see. CQ Parks on the air, CQ Parks on the air. This is Whiskey One Radio Charlie Papa. Whiskey One Radio Charlie Papa. You can rename it. Let's see. If you hit play, does it transmit? Huh. That might be something to work on later. Um, rename. Let's let's rename it just for fun. Okay, so the next few seconds or minutes that you're gonna watch are gonna be me acting in frustration. But as I was editing the video, I realized that it does work. So check this out. I can send on, pretend I'm on, you know, 7.1670. So I can send it, listen. And listen, that sounds a lot better than what it sounded like on the stock firmware. So if you want to record, you go to app, go to app two and hit, uh, nope, that's not right. That's the recorder if you wanted to record off the air. So record another message. When, as soon as you hit record though, you need to be ready to start recording. CQ Field Day, CQ Field Day, this is Whiskey One, Radio Charlie Papa One, Bravo Golf Alpha. Now I guess I need to look at the times. If you hit playback. CQ Parks on the air, CQ Parks on the air. This now see, that Whiskey didn't work. One, that didn't work last night, but it sure works now. CQ, test, 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 test. Okay, so the dummy load's not getting that hot, so that's good. If it is even going through the dummy load. We haven't, we haven't really modulated much. Okay, so TX power, what are we sitting at? It says five watts, but up here, it's um, saying 10 watts. So I'm not really sure why that's busting the power like that. Is it because I'm too close? No? Check, check, check. Okay, so Maybe the TX power is a little not functional for, I can't spin it too fast. Let's take it down to zero. Uh, that's as low as it goes. Oops, sorry about that guys. CQ parks on the air, CQ parks on the air. CQ, CQ, okay, so it's just not showing us up here when we increase it to two watts cq parks on the air so yeah see it's it's not 
it's not quite showing us what we want. So if we keep increasing the power while we're testing, then we're at nine watts, 10 watts. Oh, he won't let you go to 12, it. This is Whiskey One Radio Charlie Papa, testing, testing, testing. Now, I would normally operate voice at 10 watts on here. I am no purist. 10 watts is still considered QRP. Um, as far as SSB goes, CW 5 watts and digital 5 watts. Okay, so the only thing that I don't see it's doing something. But you can also see that it it does pick up the microphone, which is bad. That's not cool. So this may be useless in this particular firmware. Because watch. So you can see where my, um, my modulation, the frequency as I went up but it's not playing back the recorded audio. So that, uh, that, I guess that is what it is. So that's one thing that might be annoying. Does speaker mode have anything to do with that? Let's find out. CQ Parks on the air, CQ Parks on the air. This is Whiskey One, Radio Charlie Papa. Let's go back to message. There's nothing. There's nothing. So did it even record anything is the question. So let's... CQ Parks on the air. CQ Parks on the air. CQ, CQ, CQ Parks on the air. This is Whiskey One, Radio Charlie Papa. Huh. There's nothing. It's just silence. That's weird. Okay, we're going to stop that. We'll delete that one. We'll delete that one because it's obviously blank. won't let me delete it I want to delete it oh I think we found a bug it's not letting us do anything let's go back to general let's go back to message let's get a mess oh it was already gone it just didn't didn't update so why is it not letting us record I had this problem earlier when it was the handheld mic game. Don't forget, you got to use the top button for that. I think I had to go higher on that. Um, monitor level, we're going to leave alone. Let's go back to message and try that again. There we go. CQ Parks on the air. CQ Parks on the air. This is Whiskey One Radio Charlie Papa. Nope, that did not solve the problem. That did not solve the problem. So that's obviously a no-go. I hit delete. It didn't ask me if I wanted to delete it. It just did it, I bet. Yep. All right, let's see. Do you record it without the microphone plugged in? Let's find out. Let's go to message two of two. CQ parks on the air. Uh-uh. <laughs> There's nothing moving. Okay, so that... 
doesn't function as nicely as we would want it. I wonder if that's what somebody else was talking about. So audio volume, we've already done that. Okay, so we've been messing around. That would be probably one of the most useful things to use. Let's, let's say that we want to choose internal. Now let's try it again. CQ parks on the air, CQ parks on the air, CQ, CQ, no, 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 there's nothing. Record stop. Nothing. So that is the only failure that I see thus far is that these don't do anything for the recorded voice. So let's go to general. Let's go to mic select and do the handle. Instead of using auto, let's see. The gain is at 37. How high can you go? I, I just, I don't want to go any higher. I don't want it to sound like crap. Monitor level is 20. I don't know what this voice rate is or pitch or volume. I don't know. Okay, let's go to message. Let's go to record. Let me have my mic ready. CQ Parks on the air, CQ Parks on the air. This is Whiskey One Radio Charlie Papa. Nothing. Nothing. It's just. It's just key in the microphone. Ah, stop. Delete. Okay. So that's a useless feature. Womp, womp, womp. So let's see. Can we use the keys on the keyboard to select the mode? It doesn't look like you can. Nope. So... You can scan frequencies, but as far as the mode goes, I'm not seeing any, um, you can enter the frequency in megahertz, which would be, let's say I wanted to go to 7.200. I mean, dang, I'm surprised we're not hearing anything there. Okay, so, oh no, somebody let a mosquito. Testing, testing, Whiskey One, Radio Charlie, Papa. So there are some things that are not quite working as they should. But I don't think I'm all that mad about it. Um, attenuation is on. Does that have... Oh, no, it's not on. So that's preamp. That's attenuate with preamp. And then you have VFOA and VFOB. How would you go to VFOB? So I don't know how to go to VFOB. That button is not functioning. So if you wanted to work split, oh. Okay, that's how you switch from A to B. It's not VM, it's AB. So let's say we want A to equal B. Okay, we got VFOA, VFOB. Let's say we wanted to send CW and we wanted to be, uh-oh, what happened? Oh. Okay, so if you're on 7.200, I would probably want to send around 7.199, lower, this is lower sideband, and we would set that to CW. We do not want the preamp on. How did I turn that on and off? 
Okay, so there's CW. Now let's go back to VFO A. Dang, preamp was on. Now you hold this to work split. So let's say that we hear somebody coming in and then we need to cross, cross modem. Ooh, that's... So the only problem is it makes the mic live. And there, there, there really are few times that I would do this, but there are certain people that I know know CW. And if I couldn't break through a pile with voice, I could break through the pile with CW. Now, why didn't you do it that time? Is it because this was too close? Yep. So just keep your microphone away from the radio and don't talk and don't be noisy. Because if you do this, is it, is it just the monitor? I bet it's just the monitor. So that might actually not be um, modulating, which would be, I guess that's okay. And then they would come back and then maybe you could this is whiskey one radio charlie papa so of course it split so that's that now wouldn't that be something if you could use this to send moore's code using it that way Again, I would need another radio to be able to test it sitting here. So, okay, those are some things to look into. I spent quite some time kind of looking at this after we installed it. I think it's pretty neat. And I think it is a nice alternative to what is already on the X6100. It seems to work now. Trying it out in the field might be the next thing. Becoming familiar with your filters and such would be something you would want to do before you actually took this into the field. So I guess this is a recorder that you could record what is going on. So the recorder's on. Let's try it out. Whiskey One, Radio Charlie Papa. Oh, don't forget. I don't know what that did, but let's pretend they're talking. Um, let's go back to... I think the recorder turned off. It did. No, it's still going. Now, did it actually, will it? I don't know what good that does. I don't hear anything. Except feedback because The mic was live, but that was it. I think that's just key clicks. I don't think that's actually doing anything. Okay, so which one are you going to use to scroll through there? Let's see. Hit play. Again, I don't know if it's supposed to be playing through an external speaker, which I've already put away. 
I don't know where that's playing from or playing to, or if it's, uh, it, that part doesn't work. So if you have any clue as to what that's supposed to do, let me know. Okay, so we'll delete. Let's go ahead and select that one, hit delete. And we'll just get out of there. Okay, so most of what's in here works. Most of it works. So if we go to CW and we unsplit what we have here, and let's just say th that we're on, yeah. So some of the band descriptions are off. And that's probably Canadian or Russian. Um, don't know if there's a way to select. I'll do some reading up and see what we can do, but let's see if we can hear. If you turn this fast enough, it will zing, but if you want to fine tune, what's going on here? Why does it go? Oh, it's switching because of, so if we go back to here, okay, it didn't do it that time. That's the whisper area. I've, I finally figured out, but I'm not going to hear whisper on a dummy low, but you know, let's say I'm in the SKCC. That's my key. It's coming a little loose. I think the screw came loose in it. It's not sending it. There we go. So it's not fully reliable on some of the button pushes. That's interesting. Why did it take so long? But hey, at least that one works. That's the one I use the most anyways. I don't mind talking on a microphone. But sometimes I'll play CW for hours and hours. So you can do different ones there. Okay, so I'm done. This has been the review of the R1 CBU. Thanks for watching.